Welcome to episode five of William Newton News Watch. I'm the hospital's director of marketing, Sarah Johnson. We're hosting a watch party right now on Facebook for this premiere, so please talk to us in the comments. We'll do our best to respond live or address them on the next show. Our scene of the week is the H.L. Snyder Medical Foundation Surgery Center legacy wall behind me. Our hospital is still limiting the number of visitors that enter our facility, but the next time you're here, be sure to stop by and learn more about the Snyder physicians and the role they have played in delivering healthcare excellence in our community. You can also see a list of donors who contributed to the surgery center itself. One of those donors, Becky Jarvis Long, is joining us today, and she is in front of the Lawrence and Virginia Jarvis Family Anesthetist Office, which is named for her family. She is deeply connected in the community, and the way that she connects people to our foundation has been such a huge blessing to William Newton Hospital. Today, Becky will be talking to a few hospital employees to see how they're doing during the pandemic. Good morning, how are you today? How are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was actually born in this hospital eons ago, and I have spent many days and evenings up here with loved ones and have had excellent care. So I got involved in the Hospital Foundation board about 10 years ago and have loved being more involved with the hospital. And I understand that you have a few questions for our hospital employees. Take it away. Well, I do have some questions today. We have three ladies with us today from Central Sterile. They are lovely ladies. We have Valerie Madondo, Vanessa Strickland, and Virginia Maforo. These ladies are always happy, in a good mood, smiling, and uh, they, have, they have a very important job. So we would like to ask them a few questions about how the COVID-19 has been impacting their jobs here at William Newton. Good morning. So ladies, can you tell me how COVID-19 has impacted your day-to-day -day life? We're still here. Um, just smiling at everybody because the masks that cover our face, you know, only people can see your eyes. But um, that, our, our hours have been cut a little bit due to not having as many elective surgeries, just trying to conserve on PPE. Uh, but other than that, at home, I, we just recently lost a loved one and just the whole process, the funeral and everything is just different. Yes, uh, our lives have been changed in so many different ways, uh, both here at the hospital and around us. When we are here at the hospital, we miss seeing our wonderful uh, volunteers who are always here going up and down the halls of William Newton Hospital. And we understand the effects uh, of the pandemic. But right now we are just thankful that we are able to come here to work and do whatever we can. And then we go home and slowly things are starting to be busy again here at the hospital. So we thank for, we are thankful for all that we can do and all that we have uh, provided for us to be able to do our work. The biggest change I've seen in our day-to-day -day, uh, work life is uh, the distribution area of our job. Um, Amy Soto and those girls in Hutchison are doing a great job getting those vital uh, equipment, PPE, all that kind of stuff that we need for the pandemic. Uh, also, thank you to all the community um, donations that we've received. Uh, as far as a home life, my wedding got postponed until next year, and I don't let my mom go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie, I'm sorry to hear you had a recent loss. And uh, Vanessa, I'm sorry your wedding got postponed, but things still go on and we'll move forward. PPE has become the new buzzword in society today. So although you deal with it every day, it's new to those of us in the community that have not really dealt with it before. So what's commonplace to you is new to us. Do you have any comments on that? We are all about PPE and we're just helping trying to help promote, you know, everybody to wear a mask, we know it's uncomfortable, but we want everybody to be safe and keep their loved ones safe. Uh, and then I always just say, you know, discomfort's a little bit better than being, you know, dying from this COVID-19 that's going around. So I just encourage everybody to wear their mask and stay suited up. 
it's a learning experience for all of us. Do you ladies have any more good tips for us? We're here live with three V's with our hottest new track called PPE. Yep. <laughs> PPE was made for you and me. What? If it's decontaminated, you will see. So uh -huh. let's stay together and reunite because no. COVID-19 can't beat us. Yeah. You better believe us. Uh -huh. To save lives, you see, put on your full armor of PPE and respect the D stands for everyone to see. Hey, one little fact before we let you go. PPE is the way to go. Yeah. So please, please, please make it a priority. Yeah. Who's down with PPE? Yeah, you, you know me. me. Who's down with PPE? It's just everybody. everybody. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you. Elliot Rhoda is here with us. He's a physical therapist with William Newton Hospital. Good morning, Elliot. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Becky? Good, thank you. Thank you for helping out on all this. Oh, it's my pleasure. Well, um, we're glad you could join us this morning and you have an important position there and at the hospital as a physical therapist and you've been there a long time. How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected the care you provide? Well, before the pandemic, we were hopping, we were busy. Um, we, our, our schedule is hard to schedule patients. We were busy and we were working some overtime and that sort of thing. Since the pandemic, things have slowed down a lot. So um, they're not doing an elective surgery, or they weren't doing elective surgeries, and so that meant a lot less patients. So that meant several things. Um, one, we have a lot more time for patients, right? We have time to, to, to spend with our, our patients, um, but it's also easier to schedule it, easier to get them in, in the schedule sort of thing. Um, uh, but we've also been doing some, uh, uh, some uh, continuing education, some CEUs. Um, we have to have 40 hours before January, so we've been catching up on those. Um, and then some therapists have just been taking some time off. So a lot of our therapists aren't working full time. Um, but things are starting to ramp up. Uh, they're, they are doing elective surgery now, so we're seeing more patients. And, but uh, so far, it's been pretty easy to schedule them. We've been able to get them in, uh, get them in pretty quick. Well, that's awesome. I know it's always, um, you guys are always packed full. Your slots are always filled. So it's nice to maybe have a little more flexibility as far as the patient is concerned. Are there some new safety precautions that you've been putting in place to protect patients that are still coming up to William Newton for physical therapy? There's several layers. Um, the first is that anybody who comes into the hospital um, is checked at the front door. Um, they screen them, they ask them questions about uh, um, if they've been to expose or if they have any symptoms, um, but they also they check their temperature. So you can't even get in the hospital without doing that. Um, and then um, all employees also are, we're getting our temperatures checked every day too. Sort of interesting in the case of, of employees, uh, both uh, Michelle Hedges, she's a physical therapist here, and myself um, both had to quarantine. So um, she went to Florida um, kind of before things were getting bad, but by the time she got back, things that uh, Florida was a high risk area. So um, she had to take two weeks, she had to quarantine for two weeks. And then um, I picked up my daughter at the airport and she came home from England, which had just become, a, literally the day before it become a high risk area. And so uh, um, both of us had to quarantine for a little while. Um, and uh, neither one's had any symptoms or anything like that. But, uh, but that's one of the things that we're just, you know, um, we don't want employees coming to work if they have any symptoms. Um, we're checking temperatures every day, that sort of thing. But we're also wearing a mask. So uh, um, we, we wear a mask all the time. Matter of fact, I was kind of excited to get to do this interview because I got to take my mask off for a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're wearing masks all days except for all day long, except for when we eat. Um, and then uh, we've always been pretty good about washing our hands and, and, uh, and cleaning and disinfecting and that sort of thing. But we're doubling down now. Um, we wash our hands at least twice as much, um, it may be, it may be more than that. But we're also even asking our patients to wash their hands. Um, and by the way, as of next week, we're even asking patients to wear masks when they come to physical therapy because it, it, we are so close to patients. Uh, another thing that we can do is that when we don't have to touch patients, um, we, we, we don't. We, we stay across the room from them, try to stay a safe distance from them sort of thing. So with our mask on and all those things. So and that's another way that we think we can, we, we can lower everybody's risk. And we also have a, a, a tech who follows us, around, follows us around and disinfects all the time. We go through the disinfectant about three or four times as fast as we used to. <laughs> I bet that's true. I've had the benefit of your physical therapy expertise here at the hospital before, and I always thought the place was as clean as could possibly be, but I'm sure it's getting even more care than it was before. If someone is a, a patient that needs to come to physical therapy that may have 
some pre-existing condition or maybe a higher risk, is there an alternative for them rather than coming to the hospital for physical therapy? What we do have available is home health. So where the patient, the physical therapist actually goes to the patient's house to keep them from being exposed. Um, of course, the physical therapist has to be especially careful. So our, we have a, one physical therapist that we dedicate to that, and she's especially careful. So she sees very few outpatients. She tries to keep her patients mainly to home health patients so that she, her exposure is limited. Ah, there goes the fire alarms. Um, and they, they, noted, they reported they were going to be testing them. Um, let's see, but uh, uh, yeah, so home health is a, is a way that patients, uh, that we can see patients that are at risk. That's wonderful to know, Elliot. Um, you and the whole physical therapy team at William Newton does a fantastic job, and we're very grateful to have you all there. It's quite a benefit to the community. Thank you so much. We love doing it. Well, thank you to Becky and all of the employees that have joined us today. I know Becky has served on our foundation board for nine years, and so I'm sure it's very interesting kind of from an outsider's perspective to see how the hospital is handling this. Becky? This is one of those crazy things you've read about in sci-fi books or <laughs> mystery thrillers, but you never really think it's going to happen to you, but here it is affecting our community. Um, we've been extremely fortunate that we've had very little problem in our county and our hospital has done a tremendous amount of work to be prepared in case we did have uh, more problems or need more assistance. And just the fact that we have the staff and the doctors and the nurses and the tech support and all the people like Valerie Virginia and Vanessa helping keep things going and Elliot that's looking out for his patients. I, I think our community is extremely blessed to have William Newton Hospital here and prepared and uh, they were prepared whether it was a science fiction movie or not. So <laughs> we're grateful we have them here. Keep tuning in to William Newton News Watch. We promise to keep bringing you the inside scoop on what's happening at William Newton Hospital and keep bringing you people like Becky who are working hard to lift up everyone in our community. Stay healthy.